Shirley, stop that yelling. Take out my belt, Angry Aunt Ruth. Yeah, they got a few things. Shirley had a few things. She has two got a pair of things to come back. No, 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 no. David, look, darling, why don't we give her some medicine instead, huh? It's got to be cut out. They said if Daddy had not it's going to have to die. Ah! Well, she's not going to die, dear. Now, look, I tell you what. Why don't you both go get a cookie and put her to bed and watch her for a while? Maybe she's not as sick as you think she is. Two cookies? All right. Two cookies. You know where they are. Go get them. <laughs> Honestly, Murray, they're your children. It does seem to me that you could... Could what? Oh, never mind. Did they interrupt deathless lines? Leave that alone. Okay. I will wait with the rest of mankind. When are you going to leave your world to make believe? Murray, are you in pain? Not right now, no. Then there's no excuse for you being so mean. Mean? Uh -huh. Am I being mean or just realistic? What you call realism is only sadism, Murray. You're so insecure. Sure I'm insecure. Who isn't? I am not. No, you're 30 years old and afraid to get married. That's pretty secure, isn't it? I'm not afraid to get married, Murray. Then why don't you quit stringing Eddie along? What kind of a life is it for the guy picking you up three times a week at the Circle Inn and bringing you straight home? My marriage is my own business, Murray. You are afraid. And I'll tell you why. You think about being alone in an apartment with Eddie. That moment when the living room lights go out and there's only one room to go to. You, the princess. Being just a wife. And you can't face it, Vida. I don't know why you have such a fantastic idea of me, Murray. I really don't know why. I'll tell you why. Because I went around with you before I married Evelyn. You were a prude then and you're still a prude. You're a born old maid. A man doesn't want an old maid. He wants a woman. Well, I gave you a good chance to hit back. Why don't you use it? Oh, stop it, Murray. You won't say it? All right, then. I'll say it. And a woman wants a man. And I'm only half a man. And Evelyn's a full-blooded woman. Isn't that what you're thinking? Say it, for heaven's sake. Say it. Oh, Murray, you know I'd never say a thing like that. You're all upset. You need Evelyn, so I'll go early to the restaurant and send her on home. You'll feel much better with Abby here. This is what I meant. Not bad, huh? Not bad? Are you kidding? I thought you meant the other one. Oh, I meant this one. They're sisters. Yeah, so you said, but this one's a doll. So is the other one, only she carries a stop sign, but this one carries a go signal. If you get what I mean. Oh, could I have some ketchup, miss? On tuna yet? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and, and miss, did you ever read the Kinsey report on women? No, only the one on men. Wipe the egg off your chin, chum. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's her. The other one. The one with the stop sign? Hasta la vista, gorgeous. And I ain't gonna quit trying. That goes for me, too. That's the spirit, boys. Someday we'll go on a picnic. You bring your mothers and I'll bring my husband and kids.
How'd it go at the house? Oh, just fine. Well, I guess Murray was a bit grouchy, but we finished up friends. Oh, and uh, David finally lost that back tooth. It was touch and go whether or not he'd swallow it. But we won. But I don't know what I'd do without you. Perhaps you'd do better. Don't even think a thing like that. So what I tell you, there she is. Ah. Wowie! Delicious. Be back for more later. Let me just take a look at this old character out of the past. My old buddy, buddy, Glenn Harris. You remember I told you all about him. He was my sidekick at Fort Benning. And you know what? He killed his rich maiden aunt. He killed her with kindness. <laughs> Inherited all their loot and bought the service station down the corner of 7th and Brand. Come along and say how do you do to the gentleman. Glenn, this is my intended, Miss Vida Dove. How do you do, Mr. Harris? Nice to meet you, Miss Dove. <clears throat> oh, and uh, by the way, be polite to her. Her brother-in-law owns the joint. Who are you calling at this hour? Another girl? I'm calling my office, bub. I'm a big shot. Hi, Corey. What office? You dragged me over here so fast, I didn't get a chance to find out what his job is. He's a troubleshooter for the water and power. When I knew him, he was a sharpshooter. Now he's a troubleshooter. Quite a switch. You're a lucky girl, Miss Dove. Sure, I've got the key. Thank you. I think so. Some more? No, thank you. It's my bedtime. Sometime let me read something you've written. Good night, Eddie. Good night, Mrs. Timberley. Yeah, but here's fits the second condenser lock. All right, I'll be down. Sorry, kids. I love you, but I gotta leave you for a couple of minutes. Oh, uh, by the way, the two-buck diamond indicates an option on converting Miss Vida Dove into Mrs. Eddie Collins. Mm -hmm. Eddie, stop. <laughs> and it's an option I intend to take up, so don't get any ideas. Well, so long for now. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Ooh! Ha ha ha! Body says to his sorrow! Ha 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 ha! Um, can I get you something else? Thank you. Pretty. Am I too late for a cup of coffee? Well, no, I guess not, Mr. Harris. No cream, no sugar. Okay. I go now, Miss Duff. All right, Harry. Good night. Good night. Only, uh, if Eddie isn't back pretty soon, I'll have to leave. And they'll be wondering at home what happened to me. And what is home? My sister, her husband, and a couple of kids. Will you join me? Scared. I don't bite. Well, that's nice. For a minute, I was afraid you might. You have such strong white teeth. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. No, no thanks. thanks. I, I don't, don't smoke. smoke. <laughs> I like you, Vida. You can laugh. But I can see you can look into the deeper things of life, too. Well, some of them are. Too deep sometimes, for my own good. Don't let it get you, kid. When are you and Eddie thinking of taking the plunge? 
Well, I don't know. I'm not really free. And, well, I have certain obligations, and Eddie is... Well, if you know Eddie, then you know Eddie. How long has this been going on? Oh, about two... It's nearly three years. Mm -hmm. You kids are in no hurry, are you? Well, a person has to be sure. And even after that, the things that can happen to people. Like what? I was thinking of my sister. My brother-in-law used to be a professional dancer. Now he's a cripple. The result of a terrible auto accident. Once upon a time, when those two people looked at each other, the whole room seemed to be filled with something beautiful. I heard that old girl say something about you being a writer. You must be pretty good at it, the way you express yourself. No, I'm afraid not. Oh, I can dream lots of wonderful things, but when I try to write them, there's always something missing. Maybe you ought to live them. They say you have to live life to write about it. That's what all the famous writers do, isn't it? Oh, well, in the writing course I'm taking now, they say that a story should be about somebody wanting something. And what do you want? Well, well, what do you know? Boy meets girl. Girl meets boyfriend of boy. Boy loses girl. It's a boyfriend. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> Oh, Eddie, will you please stop making those stupid, childish jokes? Well, so long. Be seeing you. Yeah, see you, Bob. Did he go? Didn't he say anything? No. He's a great guy, isn't he? I wouldn't know. Honey, what's the matter with you tonight? Matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? Well, you're funny. You don't see anything funny about me. Oh, I don't mean funny, ha-ha. I mean funny peculiar. Well, then why not say so? Hello, Vi. Eddie. Hello, darling. Hello, you two. How's the boy, Murray? How'd it go tonight, Nyla? What? Why isn't the way it always goes, Murray? Is that chair leg broken again? How am I going to keep the kids off of it long enough to get it fixed? Just put some soap and a couple of toothbrushes on there. If I know those kids, they'll make a detour. Tired, Vida? Most of the time, Murray. Been on your feet all day, huh? She ain't been standing on her head, that's for sure. Spider, did you remember to bring home the insecticide? We've got cockroaches in the kitchen again. Oh, no, darling, I, I'm sorry. I forgot it. Hey, you're in great form tonight, Murray. Come on, let's see you smoke one over, boy. Okay. Here comes the knuckle. Watch out. Hey, this is it. Catch him down on second. Yeah, that's good work. Oh, hey. I got a big surprise for all of you. Well, come on, out with it. There's one thing I like bearing a little surprise. It's a big one. Remember that article I was reading you yesterday? Oh, uh, what article was that, Murray? The one about sea bathing. I read it to you. Oh, yeah, about sea bathing and paraplegics. Oh, Eddie, paraplegics. The word is paraplegics. Well, Doc Raines was here today, and I asked him straight out. Are these claims about sea bathing on the level? Well, are they? There may be complete cures. 
It's more than possible. Isn't that right, Evelyn? Yeah. Paraplegics who could walk again. Run again. And dance again. This is my surprise, kids. What would you say if I told you we might sell the Circle Inn, sell our equity in this house, and move to the beach? Sell the Circle Inn? Move to the beach? Just how do you propose that we should live? We would live because we'd have the use of our legs again. We would earn a living as a dancer. We could get booked anywhere in the country. We might even get to be headliners. And by we, I don't mean you, you old crab. No, Murray, don't talk like that. Hey there, Yogi. Next time you miss a catch like that, we'll stick you in the outfield. You all right, Murray? It wasn't anything. I just slipped. Sure, he's all right. He was just sliding for home plate. Oh, Eddie, why don't you stop acting like a ten-year-old? Playing ball in the living room, it's ridiculous. Why don't you stop picking on Eddie? What's the matter, Vida? Doesn't he appeal to you? Hey, Murray, after all, we are engaged. Why do you always pick on Vida? For the good of her soul. You know the meaning of her name. Vida means life. But who knows what life goes on inside of her? But someday, maybe we shall know. Go on, Vida. Tell us. Tell us what you're really thinking. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, Murray. I'm thinking that you're working yourself into an attack and that presently you will have to have an injection and that with each injection, you're building up immunity. I am thinking that you should try to calm yourself. Of all the self-righteous biddies! You are not going to get a rise out of me tonight, Murray Meyer. I am not in the mood. I'm tired and I'm going to bed. Good night, Evelyn. Eddie. Anything happen here? Who was in? Oh, just the usual. There was a, a new one in last night. Glenn Harris. A friend of Eddie's. You're funny sometimes, aren't you? Why? Oh, the way you said that. A new one. Well, he is new. I've never seen anyone quite like him before. You know how I always say that people remind me of animals? Well, Glenn reminds me of a, of a panther. He's lithe and dark, and his voice is gentle and low, but strong at the same time. And his eyes. They're like wood smoke. And he walks around and sits down as if he owned the whole world. 
And I guess he does. Especially when he smiled. Oh, honey. No one like that ever came in here. Let's hope he's here to stay. He sounds gorgeous. A glass of orange juice and a hamburger. No. You better make it avocado, egg, bacon and tomato with some peanut butter and pickles. Make it a double decker and a glass of milk. I got it. One two story tummy coming up. No, thanks. I've eaten. That's too bad. I just stopped by to tell you that Eddie and I framed you. Framed me? You got a date tonight, the three of us. A rose between two thorns, as Eddie would say. We'll have a few drinks up at my place, and then maybe we'll go out in the town. That sounds wonderful. See you tonight, then. Excuse the looks of the place. It hasn't all the comforts of home yet. How nice, Lynn. All those books and paintings. It's a Picasso, isn't it? And music. Just about everything. Well, I'm not exactly a caveman, you know. Sit down. I'll take some drinks. Not bad. Not bad at all. It'd be kind of nice to have a cozy little nest like this, huh, Vi? Eddie, don't be so obvious. You mind getting it, Eddie? Sure, sure. But what will I tell her, that you got a date with a gorgeous brunette? Hello, please. Mr. Harris, residence. Yeah, this is Eddie. How did you guess? Now, go ahead. I'm all ears. Fire? Kenneth, the morning sign? Oh, no. Oh, for crying out loud. There's no outlet there. It's four blocks to the north. Okay, okay, I'll be over. Why did I have to tell you where I was? Or if this ain't the craziest way to make a living. Some guy backs a truck into a fire hydrant, and now I've got to leave my girl alone with this gas station Casanova again. Well, I'll go with you, Eddie. Oh, no, no. I can't take you out in the middle of nowhere in the cold, cruel night. Have you sitting there maybe till the crack of dawn? Lenny boy, look after my little girl, will you? See that she gets home safe and sound. Glad to. Well, bye-bye for now. 
Remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs> What more could anyone ask? Everything's perfect. Time, place. Aren't you... Aren't you going to take me home? Any hurry? Well, it's just that, that Eddie... I've got a picture of Eddie dragging you around by the nose. And now about that drink. Are you for it? Oh, no, no, thank you. Evelyn's the drinking member of the family. Evelyn? Uh, the sister I told you about. You must be fond of Evelyn, aren't you? Of course. She's my, my favorite person. I had a kid brother. He was a nice sort of brat. Of course, he got all the attention, so naturally I resented him. I tried to hang him once. They cut him down just in time. He was purple. <laughs> oh. I'm glad. Lovely. Feel better? Uh-huh. I want to show you something. too, isn't it? Lovely. Thanks. I'm very proud of my view. Glenn, somehow this all seems familiar to me. This little balcony, the apartment. Funny, isn't it? I felt it the minute I walked through that door to I've written about your place. With me in it? I do seem to recognize you. Funny, isn't it? What kind of stuff do you write? Love stories? Most any kind. There's a story in everybody, you know. In every situation. Like this unexpected development? Well, I suppose some vivid imagination could build some sort of story out of it. You're dreaming it up right now. I can almost see your mind buzzing. What's the plot? I'm not quite sure myself. There are some things that are almost impossible to write about. Anything impossible about that? No. It's not too hard to describe. How wonderful it must be to... to have a little place like this. To fix up just exactly the way you want it. You're just the girl I'm looking for. This place needs the feminine touch. And? Your red leather chair about here. And uh, another chair there, I think. A chintz covered wing back. Please, lady. Can I keep my couch? Well, yes. I, I think that would work in very nicely. With a coffee table in front. Um, no, no, no. Wait a minute. No, the table should be down here. Between these two chairs at the fireplace. I'm just getting settled and already you're making me move furniture. And, um, soft gray drapes. To shut the world out? I'm just trying to do it. You have beautiful taste. I can see it all now. 
Maybe next time it'll be ready and you can tell me where to hang the pictures. Such fun. Come on, back on the job. My cave needs a little glamour. Hmm. Hmm. Not much scope, hmm? Kind of small. But it still has possibilities. It's okay, it's yours. But you better make it strictly for pleasant dreams. Modern, I think. Smooth looking. See? Dreamline. And the best for it. Beige. With brown flags. Don't you want to lift home? No. No, thank you, Ben. Thank you for a very nice evening. There you are, Mr. Timberland. Pick up one cheeseburger, one ham, one ride. Me, but I'd ask for whole wheat. I'm sorry. The lady up there is just leaving. No hurry. What's wrong with it, Miss Dobb? What would you like? Right now, I'll settle for a roast beef sandwich. And don't spare the pickles. I'm afraid you must have thought that I was very adolescent last night, getting all upset the way I did. You know your own mind. Or do you? How's Eddie? He's fine. Now there's Evelyn. Evelyn? My baby sister. Isn't she pretty? Can I help you? You must be Mr. Harris, Eddie's friend. Yes. How did you know? Vida spoken of you. Nothing serious, I hope. Far from it. Most complimentary. Well, bless your little heart. Thank you. Pick up one beef sandwich and pickles. What did you think of her? She is pretty. Very. I'm sorry I'm so late, darling. I thought I'd never get away from Murray. Well, look, Evie, why don't you go on back home? It'll cheer him up. And I don't mind staying. I'm not tired, not a bit. Vida, you've been on your feet since 7 o'clock this morning. I wouldn't think of it. But I, I don't mind. Really, I don't. Besides, you have to pick the kids up at Grandma's. Hi, Glenn. Where's my girl? In there. Hello, Eddie. Hi, Mrs. Timberley. Hey, Harry, anything cooking? <laughs> Hello, boy. I got a breathing spell in the car. Hello, Eddie. You better hurry if you want to go pick up the kids. I'll wait for you in the car.
strange. You two resemble each other, yet you're quite different. I know what it is. There's something hidden about Vida. You're out in the open. What'll I think of next? Vida admires you a great deal. Vida's a very interesting girl. And Eddie's a lucky fellow. They compliment each other. Does Murray want me to bring him anything from the store? No. Well, I guess I'd better be running along. Eddie seems to be getting impatient. Goodbye, Glenn. I hope the sandwich is all right. Hey, Vi, come on. It's a long way over to Grandma's. Gee, I can't be going all day. Come on. you try to go to sleep, Murray? You know that not sleeping brings on your attacks. I didn't ask for your medical opinion. I said, why is she so late? And if I want to know why she's so late, I've got a right to know why she's so late. Maybe she's waiting for the rain to let up. Maybe she's building an ark. That'd take a long time, wouldn't it? Murray, it's not my fault that she's not home. Did I say it was? Did I? No, you're going to make yourself sick. What do you know about my sickness? Do you know what it means to love somebody and wait for them? Did you ever wait for anybody you loved? No, you never did because you never loved anybody. Abby, is that you? It's me, Murray. Have we got a cigarette in there? Where are you, Evelyn? I'm coming, Murray. I'm coming right away. The Florence. You've been to the Florence? Florence, you've been dancing. Who have you been dancing with? Evelyn! Who have you been dancing with, Evelyn? Did Eddie come in with you tonight? Evelyn! I was a little late closing up, darling, and then Eddie came by and bought me a drink at the Florence. I didn't call because I didn't think we'd be so late. Anyway, I thought the telephone bell might wake you. As if I could go to sleep wondering what had happened to you. You've never been late before. Anything might have happened. While you were out dancing, I was lying here worrying and waiting and waiting and waiting and wait. Oh, Mary, you brought on another attack. I'm sorry, darling. I'm so sorry. I'll get you medicine. Abby. to give them to him, but I can fill it for you. Abby! You were not with Eddie, were you? No. I was with Glenn Harris. I don't know why I asked. said to her, well, what do you expect? I gotta make a living. I ain't a plumber and I ain't an electrician. Sure, those guys can stay home nights. And do you know what she said? Tom, do you want some more coffee before I close up? She said, why don't I get a job driving a cab days instead of a truck nights? And do you know why? Just so she'd have someone to take her to the movies. No cream. 
No sugar. Wow, we ten minutes after one. Where's the time gone? And where's Helen? Exactly. Where is Evelyn? She was late last night, too. And Murray got so wild, he worked himself up into a dreadful attack. Oh, gee. Oh, Eddie, I think I hear Murray. Quick, go, go, turn the clock back. Oh, hi there, Murray. How's the boy? We were afraid you were going to be conspicuous by your absence. <laughs> no. I've been figuring. You know what? With our equity in this house and selling the business, I can just about swing it. Swing what, Murray? That place at the seashore. Remember I told you about it the other night? Oh, yeah, the place at the seashore. Oh, tell me, what are the wild waves saying? They're saying I'm going to be up and around a lot sooner than anybody ever dreams. Don't you believe me? Sure, Murray. Sure you will. Yes, sir, I can see you now. Up and around. And you, Vina? The eternal skeptic? I only hope that you're right, man. You do? You really do, or would it make you feel inferior to see me standing in front of you again? Why, of course not, Murray. What a thing to say. Eddie. Did you ever see Evelyn and me dance? Oh, well, no, Murray, I never did. Well, you've danced with her. You know what a good dancer she is. No, I never danced with Evelyn. Never? Uh, I said, uh, I, I don't remember. You mean you took her to the Florence last night and didn't dance? Maybe we did. Eddie, why don't you admit that you just sat there and bored her talking about me? Well, you know how it is when you get interested in yourself. You can't talk about anything else. I guess we just kind of sat there. And besides, when a girl's been on her feet all evening, she doesn't want somebody else on them. And when it comes to dancing, I'm no twinkle toes. <laughs> that reminds me of the one about the, the two girls who were talking about their boyfriends. And one girl said to the other one, a very intellectual young man is taking me dancing tonight. And the other one says, yeah, I know. My boyfriend isn't so handsome either. <laughs> and then there's the oh, one... Eddie, uh, would you mind putting the ironing board away for me, please? Talking so much. He's setting back the clock. I forgot about his wristwatch. Operator. Will you please get me the circle in Citrus Sorry, I'm late again, Mary. So you're late. And you're sorry. Well, well. You mean you're not in on the plot to make me believe it's an hour earlier than it is? What are you talking about? I thought you might be out dancing with Eddie again. And then I realized you couldn't be because Eddie's here. And set the clock back. What took you so long? Do you walk slow because you hate to come home? 
Do you look in windows? Do you stay overtime in that cozy little restaurant after hours because it's pleasanter than coming home to me? Why don't you leave me? Why don't you give me an overdose some night so that I won't wake up? Why shouldn't you be free? Hurry, don't say things like that. Please try and calm yourself. I've never been calmer in my life. And I'm getting a good picture of our future together. You, creeping in secretly at all hours of the night, lying to me, pretending. Chidi! And all the while taking away from me my only reason for living. You're signing my death warrant, Evie. That's what you're doing. Honey, do you suppose that Evelyn and Glenn are... Don't be naive. Well, what can we do about it? Nothing. There's nothing we can do. If only Murray wouldn't talk that way. About her wanting to kill him. <laughs> Murray's still sleeping. But please don't keep looking at me that way. I know it's none of my business. Where were you? I went to his apartment. I didn't realize it was so late. Do you think you're being very fair to Murray? And the children? I'm in love with him. Really in love with him. Is he in love with you? I think so. I don't know. You don't know? Could he be in love with another girl? One he couldn't get? No. You think there's no girl in the world who could resist him, don't you? Maybe there is one. Someone who turned him down. And that's how he got interested in you. It's all so much simpler than that. We belong together. This is different. When he kisses me, it's like I'm drowning. I go around with his face in my eyes. All day long. Has Glenn asked you to divorce Murray and marry him? We didn't make any plans. Well, you see. If he were really in love with you, he wouldn't stand for this. You don't understand, Vida. I don't understand myself. All I know is if I couldn't see him anymore, I'd just as soon die. Don't ask me to give him up. You've always helped me before. Please help me now. I just can't live without him. I'm afraid you're going to have to. Good morning, darling. Good morning, Evelyn. You know, I believe I felt a little life in my legs this morning. Maybe I'm getting better. Evie, about last night. I'm sorry. Right or wrong, I shouldn't have said what I did. Be patient with me. Murray, please. I'll always love you. Remember that. Would you like to have your coffee out in the garden? It's nice and sunny. Fine. Anything you say. Will you join us, Vida? No, I have a splitting headache. Then you don't go to the restaurant today. I'll do both shifts.
Right up. How many of the guys ask Evelyn to go out dancing? Lots of them. Hmm? Murray, men always try to date waitresses. You must know that. Yeah, I know. Vida, there's somebody at the door. I didn't realize it was you. Oh, I'm sorry. The house is such a wreck. The children, you know. Oh, uh, Glenn, this is my brother-in-law. Murray Meyer. Uh, Murray, this is Glenn Harris. He's a friend of Eddie's. How are you, Mr. Meyer? Fine, thanks. Glad to know you. Oh, and Glenn, this is Shirley, and this is David. Hello. So you're a friend of Eddie's, huh? Yes. He's working tonight, so I thought I'd steal a march on him and take his girl out for a drive. All right with you, Vida? Why, yes, I, I'd love to. Oh, that, that is a... Well, I, I mean, if, if Murray doesn't... If Murray doesn't mind? No, of course he doesn't mind. Go ahead, have a good time. The kids will be all right. Thank you, Murray. Thank you very much. Shirley, come on, darling. Bedtime. All right, David, you too. Hurry up now. I'm sorry, Grant. I'll only be a few minutes. Excuse me, please. Sit down, Mr. Harris. Thank you. If you care for a drink, you'll have to help yourself. I'm uh, not much of a host. No, thanks. I don't care for anything. Where are you two going? I don't know. Ride around a bit. Maybe a go dancing. It's the greatest thing in the world, taking a girl dancing. Have you met Evelyn yet? My wife? Yes, at the restaurant. There's a dancer. Light as a feather. Rhythm not only in her feet, but in every nerve of her body. She just melts in your arms. You can't believe it if you only know her as a waitress. Some girls are born dancers. Born dancers, that's right. You know, um, we won a contest before this happened. My agent said he could get us over big, like the castles. Born dancers. Both of us. <laughs> now she's standing behind that counter watching other girls go to dances. They're coming back from them. When she gets home, the kids are yelling and I'm yelling. I'm no saint, you know. But does she ever complain? No. Never a bitter word. Never impatient. You know why? She still loves me. I don't know how she possibly can or what I ever did to deserve it. But she loves me. Seeing me like this, you won't believe it. Of course I would, Mr. Meyer. Going to wear up, Ida? Yes, dear. I'm going out. I might even go dancing. With the man that's talking to Daddy? Yes, dear. With Mr. Harris. I like him. I like him, too. Well, I'm so glad that you both approve. Now, if you both go right to sleep, and remember, no pillow fights. And if you're not good tomorrow, no cookies. It's only from, from here down. I don't seem to get any life. But, as I was saying, this business of salt water may do the trick. I'm not licked. I'm all ready, Glenn. I told you it'd only be a few minutes. Shall we go? Well, you look nice, Vida. Have a good time. A real good time. Thank you, Murray. I'll inquire around and see if any of my customers know of a goodbye out there. Thanks. Good night, Murray. Good night. I just hope the kids stay asleep and don't give you any trouble. They'll be all right. Good night. It, it must seem strange after what's happened, my, my dropping in on you. Oh, no. Not at all. I visualized it so often. It just had to come true. 
Glenn, I've been waiting for this ever since that other night. Well, so that I could change the awful impression I must have made. But, Bidey, you didn't. Do you mind if we stop for a drink someplace? Mine? Well, I think it's a charming idea. The old barn is just down the street. Oh, I've always wanted to go there. They say it's a very gay place, and they also have a wonderful dance band. Would you do something for me and Evelyn? Evelyn? I've got to talk to her. I thought if I could, I'd drive her out to the beach. We thought you'd take over the restaurant. Will you? You know I'd do anything for you. Wait to do this, Bye. Why? I didn't work today, did I? Why shouldn't I work tonight? You had it all planned, you and Glenn. Well, we talked about it and wondered. Whose idea was it? Mine. 
I said to Glenn, I know my sister Vida. She'll never let me down. Thank you, darling. Thank you very, very much. What for? It's nothing. Would you like some coffee, Glenn? No, thanks, Vida. Didn't I see you here before, young man? Yes, ma'am, at least twice. I couldn't forget anyone as attractive as you. You're not so bad yourself. Going places this evening, Evelyn, huh? Uh, yes, we thought we'd take a little ride to see some friends. Well, isn't that nice? See you later, Vada. Good night, Vida. We'll be back before you close. What happened? Where's Glenn? What's the matter with you? Where's Glenn? He had someplace else to go. Where? The rest. Are they still there? So, that's the guy. Glenn Harris. And she was with him last night, too, wasn't she? And the night before that, she wasn't with Eddie, was she? Answer me! You know something you won't tell me. What is it? You like torturing me, don't you? Getting back at me, aren't you? What do you know? She's your sister. She must have talked to you. What does she say? That she's crazy about him? That they were meant for each other? What does he mean to her? Is she in love with him? Answer me! What do you want me to say? Is she coming back? Or, or have I lost her? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're part of it. Am I such a weakling that I can't take the truth? That's all I want to know, Vida. It's the truth. I've got to know what she wants and where I stand. I can understand that maybe I've been wrong, not letting her go out, holding her down. I'll let her do anything that she wants just so long as she comes home to me. I want her to be happy. Listen, Vida. I'll even give her up. Let her get a divorce and have Glenn Harris if that's what she wants. Just so I know anything that Evelyn wants. Evelyn. Evelyn, Evelyn! Anything that Evelyn wants. 
Oh, yes, of course, whatever she wants. By all means. Of course. Give... Give Evelyn a... The last scoop of ice cream, because she's... She's such a little thing. She's such a bright little thing. Not a bit like her quiet sister. What pretty curls Evelyn has. And how charmingly she dances. Evelyn can dance off to the moon with... with the right fellow. Dance off to the moon with Murray, Evie. Go ahead, take him if you want him. It's so simple. Take Marta's fella. She won't say anything. Take Murray. She couldn't keep up with him anyhow. But Murray didn't do so well, did he? Dancer Murray has an accident and becomes this terrible, bitter Murray with a tongue like a dagger. Ida, why don't you come and take care of Murray and the children? Ida doesn't expect a thing. She's so wonderful. She's not even really a woman. She's, she's an old maid, just born to take care of other people's children and other people's homes and never have any of her own. And never to dance or laugh or love anybody. That's not for Ida, that's only for Evelyn. And when you get tired of Ida, shove Eddie at her. Eddie, who she doesn't need and doesn't love. And keep on telling her that she's an old maid and a dried up old spinster because she doesn't marry him. Till you finally made her into one because you smothered and you strangled all of her hope and her courage. And finally somebody comes along and Vida does need and want. No. Let Evelyn have him. Even though it's what. Vida needs and wants and love more than anything in life. <laughs> Vida needs and wants and loves. <laughs> That's great. Just great. <laughs> the miracle I've been waiting for. Oh, don't, Murray, don't. The old man. Finally fell. The iceberg finally melted. And you let her take him too. Ha 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 Appreciate you, my dear, you creature of dignity and refinement. If you had a chance with a guy, why didn't you take it so he wouldn't be chasing after my wife? Why did you have to freeze up at this of all times? Couldn't you for once be woman enough to hang on to a man? <laughs> Abby. Abby. I... Daddy, sick candy. I'm as well as an everybody. Go to sleep. Abby. Your mommy will give Daddy his medicine. So Daddy can go to sleep, too.
Call me back. We should get a report from the lab any minute now, Doc. He's dead? I gave him an injection. And he died. What... What are all these people doing here? Who are they? Police? What... What happened? Mr. Meyer died in violent convulsions, Miss Dove. But it couldn't have been caused by his medicine. I was so afraid for you. He was almost out of his mind. He... he found out. Fire, please. Miss Dove, your sister's been through quite an ordeal. Just let her be quiet for now. Yes, speaking. Thanks, Mac. You can finish your report now, Dr. Raines. There are traces of a deadly poison. Organic phosphate in the syringe, needle, and the medicine bottle. I'm afraid you'll have to come to headquarters with me, Mrs. Meyer, for a statement. Came over as soon as I could. It's all right, Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Don't let them take her away. What, what will they do to her? If she has committed a crime, she'll have to take her punishment. Do you feel up to answering a few questions? I? What could I tell you? I was asleep. Why don't you sit down? Have you any idea why she would have killed him? Oh, it, it had to be an accident. How did they get along, she and her husband? Was there another man involved? I can't answer that. There was a man. What was his name? Gwen... He wasn't in love with her. He was only casually interested. What about her? You... You mustn't ask me to say anything that might hurt my sister. All right for now, Miss Dove. I know you're upset. But be ready for some more questions. District Attorney's Office will be calling you. I'm afraid it's an open and shut case against you, sister, Miss Dove. That is, unless someone else comes up with a confession. What, what does she say, Evelyn? She still insists it was an accident. Well, that's just what I said. Well, of course it was an accident. She must have been beside herself when she found Murray in such pain and, and jealous over nothing. However upset she was, would she mistake a bottle this size for one this size? That she can't explain. No, it was no accident and no mistake. You see, we know now of a rendezvous with Glenn Harris and how strongly she feels about him. It. it provides a powerful motive. There is one thing, however, that has us all baffled. Why did she go to all the trouble to fill the medicine bottle with poison instead of merely filling the syringe from the poison bottle itself and injecting him with it? Well, I, I can't imagine. Unless... Unless what, Miss Dub? Well, unless she wanted to work it so that somebody else gave him the shot. And then nobody did. Or, or maybe she forgot. And finally she gave it to him herself anyway. It's an interesting thought. Well, let's put it another way, then. Would you have had any reason for setting a trap for her, knowing that she'd be the one to give him the shot? What, what, what possible motive could, could I have had for wanting to kill a, a hopeless cripple? I don't know. That's why I'm asking questions. Did you? It, it, it's all so simple. It's so easy to understand. And you can't blame Evelyn for it. She's so much in love with Glenn that 
Well, she even said that she'd rather die rather than, than have to live without him. That nothing else mattered except Glen Arrow. And, and don't you see, with, with her feeling that way, and Murray always shouting those horrible things at her. What horrible things? Well, like Evelyn wanting to give him an overdose and finish him off because, <laughs> because he'd, he'd never let her go, ever. Eddie, um, you, you remember Murray saying that the other night, don't you? Remember when Murray said, oh, why don't you give me an overdose sometime and finish me off? Did you hear Mr. Meyer say that? Yes. Murray uh, said that sort of thing any number of times, as if, well, as, as if he were afraid she might. As if he expected her to kill him. But you mustn't blame her. She's... She's sick in, in her mind and in her soul. She, she's not responsible. I'm not blaming anybody for anything, Miss Dove. I'm just sorry it happened. Thanks for your cooperation. We won't bother you anymore for the present. Oh, please remember. My sister needs help. If she could only be sent someplace where she could be cared for, everything would be all right. Steve, it sure is awful the way those law hounds trap you into saying things that you don't mean. Poor Evelyn. That Glenn's a bad egg. Imagine him turning out to be a chiseling, no good wolf. If only I hadn't have brought him around. That's what kills me. I had to punch him right in the nose to make up for it. You leave Glenn alone. Mind your own business. But why? This is my business. Anything that affects you is. No, it isn't. Not anymore. I tried to pretend that this meant something, Eddie. But it, it isn't for me. It isn't what I want. And sometimes cruel, terrifying things have to happen before we realize what's right for us. Before we're really free to do what we want have what we want to make us happy. Well, I guess this is it. But honest, Vi, all I ever wanted is for you to really be happy. I sure hope you find what you're looking for. Bye, Eddie. Don't you even want me to take you home? No. I want to walk. In the rain. You've got my number, Glenn. Put it on the book. I'm in a hurry. I've got a date with an impatient redhead. Okay, Al. And the thought of going back to the house. I don't wonder. I don't see how you can stand yourself any place. It makes me sick. Where's your heart? That great love you had for your favorite person. Is that your way of being helpful? said she shouldn't be blamed because she loves you so much. Don't you believe that a woman could love you enough to kill for you? Stop making things up, Vida. That crazy imagination of yours. You couldn't stop to get the truth, could you? Truth? About what? 
Listen, Vida, I know this whole thing was mostly my fault. My cockeyed values. Taking anything I could grab without thinking of anybody else. Then I ran into Murray. You couldn't square up with yourself and the rest of the world if you hurt a guy like him. Evelyn and I both realized that. So we decided that night on the beach never to see each other again. I, I didn't know. If, if only I'd known it was like that. Do you still think she could have gone home and killed him? I don't. And if it takes the rest of my life, I'm going to see that she's cleared. And then make up to her for all this misery. Take care of her and the kids and try to give her some happiness. Does that make any sense to you? You don't kill for love. You don't kill for love? You never loved me, did you? Why should I love you? That's right. Why should you? My life is as empty now as a, as a house that nobody lives in anymore. What's the matter, Vida? Are you dreaming again? No. Not anymore. Where are you going? I'm going to end the story I made up about myself, you, and, and love a long time ago. Such a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> 